Hey, so there I was just having a look at Beginner Blenders over on Facebook and Caesar here asks how to make this. And straight away I was thinking, oh, dupliverts would be awesome for that. And some people also made some suggestions about using a particle system as well. I think using dupliverts or instancing would probably be the easiest way, but let's go have a look at both that and particle systems. Okay, so we're over in a default blend scene. As always, let's get rid of that cube go in and add in an icosphere. We're going to use an icosphere because then what we can do is instant on every vertex of this icosphere, we can actually instance another sphere. Now I'd need it a bit more dense than that, so I'm going to turn up the subdivisions of the icosphere to three. Now if that window has disappeared, sorry, you're going to have to add the icosphere again. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way just to make construction easier. That will be our emitter, but it will actually appear over here with our other object in a moment. Now, whilst we're there, let's go ahead and name it with F2. Let's go emit so we're nice and clear. I'm going to add in another icosphere. This is going to be the object that we're emitting. I'm going to turn up the subdivisions to make it nice and smooth and turn on shade smooth. That's a really nice smooth ball. The next thing I want to do is a bit of parenting. So I'm going to make sure that my icosphere itself, or let's call it the ball, is parented to our emitter. By holding down shift and selecting it, we should have the emitter in a bright orange, this sphere in a dark orange, control and P to parent, and we will get this relationship line. And if we move around this one, we can do it freely. If we move around this one, both of them will move. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and with the icosphere, the emitter selected, go to the object data properties, scroll down, and we're going to go to instancing and click on vertices. And you'll end up with something like this. Pretty cool so far. Now, if we're lucky, we'll be able to select the ball in the middle and just scale that down. It looks like everything's going down until they all separate from one another. Nice. And then we can do a bit of tweaking here so they're kind of next to one another, but not. That looks really nice. Now we can hide our, well, this object here in the middle. We can hide that out of the way and that doesn't affect our scene. However, we cannot hide away the emitter itself. So if we wanted to do that, we'd have to shift it way out of the way, but I'm gonna render it from the side in the moment and that won't be in frame. So I'm not too worried about that. I do, however, need to add in another mesh. So I'm just gonna add in a UV sphere, scale it in ever so slightly and go, yep, that looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure that I've applied my transforms there. So I'm going to apply the scale and that UV sphere in the middle. I want to make sure that it is shaded smooth as well. Otherwise that will show up when we start playing with materials. So that's the next thing, our materials. We've got to make it look pretty. Let's go ahead, add in a new material. We're going to call it metal because those balls were pretty metal. And let's turn up metallic to 100% and turn down the roughness a little. Let's go and eyeball that in material preview. Let's make sure these outer balls also have the same material on them, which they don't appear to at the moment. Let's make sure we've got the ball selected. There we go. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. Okay, how does this look in rendered mode? Uh, pretty rubbish at the moment. A couple of reasons for that. The first one is if we go to our render tab, we're currently using Eevee. If I go ahead and turn on ambient occlusion, look at that, the definition of the balls really comes out. As screen space reflections would be a great idea to see the reflection of the balls. Now, when I render this, I want it to have a plain background. So I'm going to scroll down, go to film and transparent. That means when we go ahead and align our camera, let's do that now. It doesn't really have to be perfect at this point in time, but near enough would be good. Something like that. In fact, I want it square aspect ratio as well. So I'm going to go to my output properties and make this, I don't know, 1024 by 1024. So relatively low res. And there we go. Now we can zoom in with a square aspect ratio. That looks really nice. Let's go ahead and render that, see what it looks like. Looking pretty good. I think it's going to look a ton better though um, if I switch over to cycles and also adjust the lighting. At the moment, the only light in the scene. So let's get rid of that light and I'm going to switch my render engine over to cycles because I want to not bother adding an HDR image but actually using the built in sky environment. So switched over to cycles. I'm going to enable GPU rendering so it's a bit quicker for me. And I'm also going to go to the environment preview 
And under the color tab here, if you click the little yellow dot, we can turn sky on. And look at that, that looks awesome. I'm gonna make it a little bit more orange by bringing up the air. Yeah, that looks really, really nice. It looks a bit pixelated or noisy at the moment. If you've got the tech, you can turn on denoising or you can just render out a really high sample. I do have the tech and for rendering, I would generally recommend open image denoise. I think it's much better. And I'm gonna go and scroll down, go to performance here because I'm using my GPU. I'm gonna set this at higher, maybe 256. And then I'm going to render that out. And as it goes through, I can see there are still a few balls squished together. And there's a lighting artifact going on here that's interesting. Oh, and I can see the artifact actually now that I'm looking at it. Now, it may just be how the reflection actually is. I'm not going to spend too much time tweaking that. One thing whilst we're here, I noticed there is some more intersection going on. I'm happy with my framing, uh, but I'm going to go to the ball. I'm going to click on it, and even though it's invisible, I can still go to the object data properties here and adjust its scale. I'm going to highlight all of these in one foul swoop, then I can adjust them all at the same time, and there we go. I can bring it in. Now, unfortunately... I wasn't quick enough there and managed to select one and it had a different value to the others and I don't want that. Let's adjust this. Okay, looking good. And for those wanting to know about a particle system, bear with me, we'll set up the scene again. Let's go ahead, go file, new, general, that save. Okay, so the particle system, let's get rid of our default cube and add in an icosphere. Just like before, we're gonna have an emitter. So I want this to have enough vertices that when I'm emitting them, we've got a solid ball of balls. We also are gonna have to have another one. So let's go ahead and add another icosphere. And this time we're gonna crank the subdivisions up to maybe six. It's gonna be lovely and smooth. I can shade smooth on it as well. So it's gonna be a lovely clean surface. Now we've got two icospheres. This could be confusing, so I'm going to make sure I've named things emit and ball. Then there won't be any confusion. On the emitter, I need to make sure that a particle system is turned on. So we've gone to the particle properties and let's also, if I'm moving things around, turn on my lovely screencast keys. Awesome. We're going to add in a particle system by clicking the plus. Now it looks like it started to behave, but it hasn't. This is just an emitter and we don't want that we want a hair system now these hairs will also represent where our objects are going to go so this would be incredibly messy in fact we need a bit more control because we don't want our balls intersecting one another we want them separate we want them distinct and we want one on every vertex so we're going to have to have a bit more information about this icosphere so under the viewport overlays options i'm going to turn on statistics and you can see in the total scene at the moment, these are the scene statistics. However, if I select my icosphere, that's my emitter, make sure we are on emitter. Now, if you're having trouble selecting, I recommend the outliner. Otherwise, what you can do is hold down Alt as you're selecting, and it also gives you up this select menu. Now let's go into edit mode. We can see now we've got the structural details of that emission icosphere. And we have here, 162 vertices so let's work to that number of emissions 162 let's also come out of edit mode so we can see what's going on okay so those hairs look like they're all over the place that's because we've got a few other settings to change let's go to source and we don't want to emit from the faces we want it to be from the vertices and we also want to turn off random order now hopefully there will be 162 in this case hairs but we're going to replace that with our balls in a moment coming out of the surface and that looks pretty even to me let's scroll down slightly and go to render this is how they're going to look at the moment they're being rendered as paths we don't want that we want an object and we want to select under instance object our ball and there we go this is very similar to how we had it before we can then go to the ball itself and scale it accordingly so that we've got some space between our balls like so now one thing that we do want to do here is remove our emitter because look it's cutting into the bottom of our spheres and if we go ahead and set up a bit of a render again i'm going to go through very quickly and set up these settings i want 1024 i want to use cycles i want to use my gpu 
and I do want a bit of denoising in the render so I'll turn that on as well and I'm going to go to performance and just set that at a good size for my graphics card okay that's looking all good we have a camera in the scene let's have a look at this let's zoom in slightly and press F12 okay that is looking really good but we can see here our emitter is cutting into those balls so let's go and sort that out we are going to also go to film and transparent so I can see through the object so how do we get rid of the emitter well with the emitter selected what we can do under the particle properties is we've got this option here show emitter if we untick that and press render it will now be gone we can see there's a gap now between the balls and the inner ball that we've got which is really useful because we can use that in a moment but we can still see it in the viewport now this isn't important for us at the moment because we know it's fine but if you did want it to disappear in the viewport as well you have to go down to the second option under viewport display and untoggle show emitter and then we get a better impression of how it's going to look and I think that's much better for previewing what we want to do. Okay, so final thing here, I'm going to go to my ball. I'm going to go to materials. Now, obviously, we don't have a material we can borrow from before. So we're going to make a brand new one, call it metal, crank up the metallic, go to some sort of material preview. So we've got an idea of how it's looking, preferably from the camera's angle. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to make it a little bit shinier, a little bit more reflective by turning down the roughness. And this is really adjust to your own taste. And then finally, I don't want to leave it this kind of bland color. I'm going to go to my environment, just like we did before. Go to color, sky, that looks really nice. I'm now going to just play with air to make it a bit more orange. My mouse moved very rapidly there. Okay, that looks really nice. And of course, you can adjust the rest of these settings here to your heart's content to make it how you want. That looks really nice. The framing isn't quite central, so let's work on that. Okay, let's press F12 to render. And there we go. We've got a metallic raspberry or blackberry. Nice. Hope that helps you. I really enjoy little mini projects like this. So if you've got any questions, give us a shout and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Take care.